Hello and thank you for joining. Today we're going to run a MapReduce cluster on Nimbula Director. Uh, we're going to use the MapR Hadoop distribution. Uh, we're going to show how quickly we can get it started. We're going to run a job to verify that it's working. Um, and then we're going to do some HA. We're going to kill a MapReduce instance, uh, watch Nimbula Director automatically restart it, and watch MapR heal itself and be ready to run another job. The first thing I'm going to do is start a timer here. Uh, for the purpose of uh, showing you exactly how long things take and showing you uh, where we've uh, sped things up. You can see the clock here. Now I'm going to log in to Nimbula Director and uh, show uh, with the account George and uh, verify that there's nothing running right now. And so here we see zero instances running. Now the way we run things in Nimbula Director is with an orchestration. An orchestration is a way of encapsulating a full application definition and starting it up. Um, and so we'll show you some more details on that. I'm going to do things through the command line. It's a little faster that way. And so the first thing I'm going to do is tell the command line where my uh, Nimbula Director server is and where you know who I'm logging in as. I'm using the same account that I logged into the UI as. So I've got an orchestration already uploaded and machine images already uploaded, so you don't have to see uh, that stuff. But um, I'm looking at this map our orchestration, and uh, we're going to verify first that it's not running, which makes sense since we saw no instances. And then uh, before I run it, I'm going to open it up and kind of show you the, the guts of it. And... Uh, by the way, I'm cutting and pasting all these commands in so that you don't have to see me type and probably make typos. So the map, uh, this is a MapReduce orchestration. Um, it looks maybe a little complicated if you're not used to JSON, but it's got a pretty simple structure and organization, and uh, Nimbula Director uh, manual will show you how to uh, put these together. Uh, but one of the things you see here first is an orchestration, uh, the relationships. Uh, there's going to be four MapReduce instances, and we're going to make sure that they're all running on different servers. That is the default, but we wanted to force the issue. Um, with MapReduce, it's a good idea to spread them out. Uh, so if you lose a server, you only lose one of the MapReduce instances, and they can be healed more easily by the MapReduce cluster. So the first instance that we're going to start, the definition is over here. Um, it's got a DNS name. We're going to call it first, and we're going to uh, append to that uh, a tenant and cloud uh, domain suffix. Then we're, we're giving it a shape. Um, it's a four core 10 gig shape, uh, which allows it to actually do the work of MapReduce. MapReduce is a pretty heavy application. Um, putting it in a default security list, uh, which, which has rules allowing it uh, to allowing us to connect to it over the MapR ports, uh, because we're going to log into its console, which is important. Also allows us to SSH into it. Um, there's a particular set of uh, configuration things that you need to do to start MapR, and so we're passing in a bunch of key value pairs which tell the RC scripts in the image what uh, what to run and how to configure uh, the instance to be uh, a MapReduce master here. Uh, and lastly, of course, the image list. You know, where are we copying the image from? This is an, an image we've already uploaded uh, that has the RC scripts in question. So that was the first VM that we're running. Again, there are going to be four. This, here's a second one, very similar, same security list, same shape. Um, slightly different scripts since this isn't going to be the master and the same image list. The third looks identical to the second and the fourth is a little more streamlined because uh, it, it needs less services than even two or three. And here's the name of the orchestration which you saw us uh, uh, grab the status of. So now uh, let's, with all that out of the way, let's uh, get started. So we're just going to start this orchestration And it comes back and tells us that it's starting. If we go to the Nimbula UI and do a refresh, we should very quickly see the instances queue up. And we're probably going to speed up the video here and uh, wait until they are running. So now that they're running, uh, we'll be able to you know, log into them. Um, MapReduce instance 1 is where we're going to log into. It has an IP address and it has a DNS name. And like we said before, we're going to take that DNS name first and append to that um, the tenant name, which was JTest, um, and the cloud name, which is eval.nimbula.com. 
Uh, there was an account created in the image, so we're going to log in with that account. And here we are, we're logged into the MapReduce instance. Um, but we're going to do a lot of the MapReduce management through uh, you know, MapR's uh, UI. So let's uh, connect to that. I've already got the bookmarked since uh, with DNS it, the name is going to be predictable. And uh, once you run the virtual machines it takes a few moments longer for the UI to be ready. So we're probably just going to fast forward the video here a bit and wait until this page is available. And there we go. So let's log in to this MapReduce cluster. Let's type the username and password properly. Uh, so we're going to accept the MapR license. And here we see uh, four uh, running nodes. Uh, so I'm actually going to go through the proper process here and register. Uh, this is the free version of MapR, but even so, um, they like it when you register. I'd already done this before, so it had my information and cookies. Um, everybody else would have to type in their, uh, you know, company information. And so once it's registered, um, we have permission to run this NFS service, which is not running. And so it's orange for the status. So just for the sake of making green lights everywhere, let's start that NFS service. And if we come back, you have a fully green cluster. So now that we have a MapReduce cluster, let's start running some jobs. That's really uh, what we're here for, right? So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create an input directory on, on the MapReduce file system. And we've got to put some data in there. So I found in the public domain uh, the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. So let's uh, pull that down from the internet. And you can see just the regular you know, table of contents and the start of a story. And we're going to do a simple word cat on that. But before we do that, we have to put it into the uh, file system, then into that directory that we just created on the Hadoop file system. Let's create the output directory while we're here. There we go. Now we're ready to run the job. So what we're going to do for the job is, since I'm going to run this multiple times, I'm going to use a run environment variable uh, so I don't have to keep changing my input and output directory names. Um, so we're going to set this run to 1, it's the first time we're running it, and we're just going to run the word count job on this big text file that we created and put it in the output directory. Uh, then ultimately we're going to pull that information out of the output directory, and we're going to see how many times did uh, the word the and the word is appear in the, the Sherlock Holmes story. Obviously, being common words, there's going to be big numbers. Um, the other thing that we're going to do while we're running this is, it actually is a quick job for the sake of the demo, uh, we're going to um, actually check the MapReduce slots and see where exactly this is running. So I've kind of constructed this MapReduce command line. Oops, I have to SSH into it first. That'll help. So here you see there's five map, reduce, map slots, two reduced slots, none of which are in use because I haven't run a job yet. So we're going to be able to watch that as we're, uh, as we're running the job. So with that said, let's go and uh, run the work. So here you see the map reduce job running on the right, and on the left you see the map is doing on the third node, and hopefully we'll catch the reduce which also runs relatively quickly, which also ran on the third node, and it took 15 seconds and we have a job complete. So now let's uh, get the output, and let's check for the and is, and here we go, 71,000 or so instances of the, 9,000 instances of is. So there we go. We've successfully uh, started MapReduce. Um, it only took us a couple minutes, and we ran a job, which took us, you know, it was a small job, and it only took us 15 seconds. Uh, so now for the fun part, let's start killing things. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill this fourth instance, um, which is the easiest one to kill to keep the demo short. Uh, we're going to delete that, and it will unceremoniously uh, go away.
Um, now what the orchestration is doing, besides defining a complex application, the orchestration also watches that application and makes sure that it continues to run. So um, it will notice that the fourth instance has disappeared and it will restart that. Um, it takes anywhere between one and two minutes and here we go. We see it is queued up and ready to go. If we go to the map our dashboard, um, the timeouts here are, uh, it takes a minute to notice something has gone away and then five minutes to get really worried. Uh, so even though the failover has already began, uh, MapR actually even hasn't had time to detect the outage, which is great. That's exactly the kind of failover experience that you want to have. So thank you for joining and watching this demonstration of MapReduce on Nimbula Director.